welcome for our science lesson. Uh, we are going to look at the origin of the universe. And uh, here we are going to concentrate on various theories that come up with the origin of the universe. But specifically we shall be looking at the Big Bang theory. Uh, many years of research that have been uh, that are given uh, these years have given astronomers and uh, physicists the huge amount of evidence. This evidence has brought about the universe to the limelight, which has allowed them to have the reasonable confidence of their verification of a given period of time about the version of the history of the universe. And when we look at it, we'll be able to understand specifically how the Big Bang Theory happened. Uh, from the scientific point of view and their researches, the Big Bang Theory just happened in approximate of around uh, that is 13.7 billion years ago. The billion years ago. These years have been the years of discovering. But now, how did it happen? Uh, they suggest that, uh, especially a scientist by the name Bondi and Gold, uh, in the previous time, of 1940s and also another scientist who is Fred Hoyles in the year 1960s this is Fred Hoyles and then um, we have Bondi Gold that is Bondi and Gold These are the, the scientists who were proposing this theory of the Big Bang and their suggestions were subjected to various verification and therefore, what did they say? They say that uh, uh, the Big Bang happened in a fraction of a second. Uh, immediately, uh, this led to the formation of the universe. In their suggestion, these scientists say that the universe did not exist before it was. And uh, it was there as a single point of singularity. It has been in existence as a single point of singularity. This singularity was the, what we call the single point. Uh, and just as this single point of singularity, what happened with it? What happened to this singularity? The singularity exploded and its explosion spread in a different direction. And as a result of that, there was enormous amount of energy which stayed uh, at the center of it and it converted the particles of the matter and antimatter. The particles of the matter and antimatter were converted at the center of it within the few minutes what happened it began to expand and that also brings it an essence of the big bang is an expanding theory therefore as it began to expand these antimatter particles they bumped into each other and because of pumping into each other, they culminated to form 
what we call a galaxy. And uh, we can now be able to understand this antimatter culminated. They actually culminated. And as they culminated, they bumped into each other. They bumped into each other and clumped together. And they clumped together. As these particles were clumping together, they form what you call the galaxy. And this one brings to us to the understanding of the galaxy of which the universe is found in. That's now where our universe, that is, can also be referred to as the planet Earth. But when we look beyond the culmination of these particles, coming to form what we call galaxy. In the essence of these singularities, in the essence of singularities, the singularities, as a matter of fact, these are zones that defy the laws of physical science, especially the laws of gravity. Uh, in these zones, there are zones that defy the laws of uh, physical science, especially uh, the, uh, the black holes, the zones of gravitational pull, the zones of gravity. We refer to them as the black holes. Those black holes form the intense gravitational pressure that is majorly it is found in the outer space of the universe. And these zones of singularity, they have a very powerful gravity. So, Nothing can escape from it, including the light. And that is also, we can be able to have, the scientists can only see things that gives out light, specifically, or maybe reflect light. Such things which are found in the galaxies. And remember, the galaxies have what you call various orbits. Therefore, when we look at their orbits and various galaxies, you will find that it is only those objects that are able to give out light that scientists can be able to see. But all these objects, so long as they give light and they are found in the zones of gravity, that is the point of the singularity where we have the black holes. Then the astronomers will identify them by their ability of giving out the amount of light or reflecting the light. Okay. This brings us to be able to find out the evidence that have to support the Big Bang Theory. Let's look at the evidence. The evidence to support the theory. This theorem that has been advanced by this great scientist, does it have evidence? For over a period of time, they have been subjected to various tests. And one of the evidence 
that has been brought out is that we are reasonably certain that the universe had a beginning. That is one thing we are sure. After understanding the principle of antimatter and this matter, how they culminated together and uh, uh, clumped together as a matter of exploding in different direction, culminating its energy that begins to create an expansion, reasonably we have a reason to understand that the universe has the beginning. We reasonably have. We reasonably have a uh, we have certain or we are ascertained that we are ascertained that the universe had the beginning. The universe had the beginning. When we look at this, this becomes our starting point as an evidence to look at it. Therefore, another evidence will bring us to look at the galaxies. When we study the galaxies, the galaxies appear to be moving away. The galaxies Galaxies appear to be moving away. Let me correct this part of uh, the beginning, the spelling of this word. The galaxies appear um, to have been moving away from us. And that is to have been moving away from us. When we look at these galaxies, it is indeed they appear to have been moving away from us at a speed that is proportional. at a speed that is very much proportional to their distance. That one, we look at it. As an evidence that is proportional to its distance. Now, when we look at the speed of these galaxies, at the speed of which they are trying to move away from us, their speed is proportional to their distance. And this one brings us to attention that when we study Hubble's law, when we look at the Hubble's law, especially in 1889 and 1953, we look at the Hubble's law, it gives us the idea of these galaxies being in a position to move away at a speed that is proportional to its distance. That becomes our evidence, the second evidence that we'll have always to support. And this speed shows that the universe is expanding. Now, it reminds us huh, the Big Bang theory in the nebula cloud uh, theory. The third uh, evidence uh, speaks about uh, that uh, if the universe was initially hot, 
as the theory suggests, we should be able to find some remnants. We should be able to find some remnants of this heat. Actually, that is what it stipulates. And this one, um, it says that if the universe, if the universe was initially hot, if the universe was initially hot, as the theory suggests, as it is suggested, what will happen? We should be able to find the remnant. We should be able to find the remnant. Then, if we are going to find the remnants of these heat, do we have some ways of how we find the heat, the remnant of this heat? Yes, of course. When we study the radio astronomers by Anno Penzia, that is, and Robert Wilson, that is in 1965, we look at Anno Penzia, And these other scientists that is referred to as Robert Wilson. That is Robert Wilson. Uh, he discovered a temperature that is of 2.72. Five degrees Kelvins, which is approximately two two hundred and seventy degrees, which is approximately to two thousand two hundred and seventy thousand four hundred and twenty five degrees Celsius. This is an approximation. And this one has been proven by the CMB this one is the cosmic microwave background radiation. We call it the cosmic microwave background radiation that he came up with. The cosmic microwave background the microwave background radiations this is what these two scientists that is Anos Penzia and Robert Wilson discovered under the cosmic microwave background radiations to prove the original heat at least the remnant of the original heat is still being retained and this becomes a valid evidence the last evidence that we'll be able to share it out today uh, we look at the ratio of the primordial elements the ratio of the primordial the ratio of the primordial elements the astronomers are able to measure the relative amount of light nuclei according to the ratio of the primordial elements when we look at the ratio of the primordial elements uh, we'll find that the astronomers the astronomers are able 
to measure the relative amount of the light nuclei of hydrogen deuterium that is under the isotope of hydrogen with the protons and the neutrons. Therefore, astronomers are able to measure and detect the amount of light. They are able to measure and detect the amount of light nuclei. This amount of light nuclei uh, under the isotope of hydrogen deuterium that is a isotope of hydrogen when we look at the isotope of hydrogen when we look at the isotope of hydrogen with the proton and nuclear We look at the isotope of hydrogen with its proton and nuclei. Not nuclear, neutron, I mean. That is a neutron. Uh, it is been estimated that hydrogen, which is given letter E scientifically, has got three has got three elements and also we have hydrogen 4 we also have hydrogen 4 and actually when we bring in the lithium lithium has a 7 in actually a distance in a distance of a mixed cloud of the primordial gas and therefore the relative abundance of this nuclei most of them corresponds with the calculated and the predicted ratios from the big bang model that brings us to various evidence or that have been able to support this theory then we have also to look at another essence. Evidence number two, we were able to find out the galaxies appear to be moving away from us at a speed that is actually in proportion to their distance. That is under Hubble's law. Then let us look at the galaxies so that we can also come up with a good understanding. We look at the galaxies, stars. And eventually we shall be able to look at the planets. We shall be able to look at the planets. What is a galaxy? As you are able to understand that a galaxy is a cluster of gas, of dust, that have billions of stars which are contained in a particular group. A galaxy simply gives us a cluster. And something that is in cluster is simply in a group. Therefore, in a simple term, galaxies are a group of stars. The group of stars that are found uh, when you are able to find out in the sky, you'll be able to find there are various and numerous stars in the space. And the galaxy that uh, we are able to find ourselves in, especially there are various, uh, various types of galaxies, uh, 
let's also give another understanding of galaxy. They are a sprawling system in the space. They are always sprawling. These galaxies are a sprawling systems that are found in the space. This sprawling system which are found in the space, they are composed of dust. They are composed of dust, gases. They are composed of dust, gases, and countless stars. And countless number of stars. Uh, when we are able to find these stars, we cannot count them because there are billions comprising of dust, eh, gases, and those stars. Eh, they exist in a sprawling system. Then, when we look at the galaxy, this brings us that we are able to understand the galaxy as a group of stars. Therefore, the galaxy on which our universe or we can also call it planet on which our planet belong is referred to us is referred to us the Milky Way, that is the galaxy to which our universe or the planet belong. As we have been able to find out that they are also clusters of stars that are found in space, or you can also tell us uh, galaxies are the sprawling systems in the space that are composed of dust, gases and numerous stars uh, because you can not be able to count the number of these stars. Uh, they are actually countless. This brings us to the attention that we look the galaxies in different angles. Therefore, how many types of galaxies do we have? How many types of galaxies do we have? When we look at the galaxies, they are divided into categories. Types of galaxies. Therefore, galaxies are actually classified into three main types. They are classified into three main types. Uh, just uh, to remind us, these are a spiral, the elliptical and irregular gal galaxies. Although in different regions, we can explore the space through the astronomers and find there are also various other various types of galaxies. Let's look at the types of galaxies. Uh, as you know, there are actually three types of galaxies. And these include the spiral galaxy, we have elliptical galaxy, and irregular galaxy. When we look at the spiral galaxy, this is made up of, uh, it consists of a flat disk that has a bulging center and surrounding spiral arms. It is this galaxy, the spiral galaxy, where the Milky Way is also found. This galaxy includes of stars planets, dusts, 
and ga uh, and actually gases which are always in constant motion as they rotate around the galactic center in a regular manner actually all these stars they all rotate they all rotate around a galactic center uh, they rotate around a galactic center. This object that is referred to as the galactic center, uh, you'll be able to have found it. It is none than the sun. And they rotate around this galactic center in a regular manner. In other words, the anti-clockwise direction and an example of this galaxy is the pinwheel when we look at the spiral galaxy we'll be able to have found it in a different figure how it looks like now let us look at the chart of the spiral galaxy so that we are able to understand its glimpse of it. When we look at our chart, we are able to find out uh, how a spiral galaxy look like. Mark you, remember I've already outlined that. It consists of a flat disk with a bulging at the center and have surrounding spiral arms. This galaxy is made up of various stars. But the quite interesting part of it, uh, although it is made up of a flat disk that has spiral arms that are always surrounding it, we'll be able to find that its orbit is quite unique. This is where you will look at its orbit and as it, um, as the stars are actually revolving around the galactic center, you will find that it makes a unique, uh, a unique, that is orbit, uh, which looks like this, with the spiral arms. Therefore, it takes the spiral arms that are surrounding it. These are the arms that we are talking about. It is made up of the various spiral arms that are surrounding it. Therefore, and we look at its best example. Actually, you look at uh, the video clips of the spiral galaxy. You will find an example is the pinwheel. The pinwheel tends to behave in a such a manner that gives an essence of a spiral galaxy. And this one, being one of the galactic center, it represents various stars. And there are actually numerous stars culminating around this galaxy. Only when we are, you enlarge this body and brings it to a larger extent, you will discover that uh, these other stars can be seen or can be visible at a very distant uh, region. But now you bring them on the equal length of enlargement, you will find that the galactic center, uh, that is galactic object is at its center, and that is a controlling sun, which is comprising of this. Therefore, this becomes our spiral galaxy. It is made up of this orbit. Uh, the orbit continues. When you focus, for example, on this object, this one will become a galactic center the same way you have focused here and we have brought out its enlargement. Therefore, the same when we also focus here, you will also find that this 
is a representation of the star. Therefore, there are numerous stars that are surrounding this galaxy and they are uncountable. The best model of it, you'll be able to have found that it is made up of stars. These stars also have got what? Uh, they are all also planets. We also have dust particles and gases. There are also dust particles and gases. And therefore, this shows as an orbit of the spiral galaxy and how it looks like. Therefore, let's move on and look at the other type of galaxy. Remember, this is our galaxy. Number one is the spiral galaxy. We'll be able, we have been able to look at it. Let's go and look at the other type of galaxy. And that one is an irregular galaxy. An irregular galaxy. Now let's come back and look at an irregular galaxy as also an example or, or the, another type, the second type of galaxies. Uh, this one appears misshapen and blobby. It appears misshapen and blobby. It is actually blobby. Therefore, from understanding or from, this, from the name, as it is suggested, it does not have any distinct form. Neither can it form uh, a, a certain type or a form of object. And that is why we refer to it as an irregular galaxy. It is actually composed of numerous gas and dust that culminate in uh, numerous stars. These dust and particles, they also culminate into numerous stars uh, that are found wobbling or blobbing around it. Within, you'll find also most of these stars, they are within the gravitational influence of other galaxies especially when we go and look at our universe the areas of black holes or those zones that are comprised of it you will find that it does not have the spiral arms or any other central bulge most of the space in our universe it comprises it comprises it comprises of 20% irregular galaxies which are also in the orbit they are around the milky way galaxy they almost revolve around it and this one gives us an opportunity to find out and uh, an example of an irregular galaxy is made up of um, megalanic dust the megalanic dust is an example of an irregular galaxy. This galaxy is quite uh, important that found in the universe and you'll discover that 20% of the clusters of these stars they are orbiting just around the nearby galaxy. Uh, actually they go also, sometimes they intermingle with the galaxy where our Milky Way belong, especially when we look at our universe. And um, as a result of this, 
let's also look at the chart so that we are able to find its irregularity. The most important here I'm stressing is the orbit. Now, when we look at this chart of an irregular galaxy, you will find that it does not have any distinct form, neither does it have what we call the spiral arms around it. Neither does it have what you call a central object. It is just comprises of various and numerous stars uh, just clustered in this manner when we look at it. Although this seemingly to be a brighter star, but we are not sure if it is the galactic center. When we look at its orbit, the orbit... Uh, its orbit is actually shapeless, and therefore it does not have, it does not give us uh, a, a, distinct uh, a distinct shape. And that is why it is referred to as an irregular galaxy. And uh, we have been able to look at an example. Uh, an example is um, megalanic, uh, megalanic dust. That is an example, megalanic dust. Is, a, is, a, is an example of an irregular galaxy which comprises of numerous clouds uh, of uh, dust that are clustered together. This one are at, at a distance. Can be able, not be able to see them clearly because uh, some of these stars are found billion distance away from our main galactic center that at least we are able to experience its solar energy or the light radiation that is reaching to us. Uh, they are found at a distance away. Therefore, it is only by the help of the binoculars and other telescopes, the powerful telescopes. You remember the telescope was invented by one of the scientists. Uh, that we are able to bring uh, our galaxies into focus and able to understand at it. Therefore, this is an irregular galaxy and how it takes its shape it is actually has a shapeless orbit uh, but this orbit when you try to study it uh, maybe carefully seemingly it is takes also an anti-clockwise manner or an anti-clockwise rotation uh, but although we are not sure where there is a center of a galactic object especially the sun but it has some brilliant stars. This is just the stars that are here. Some stars are found here. Another one are here. And there are numerous stars that are culminated in it. The emphasis looks on the orbit. Look at these orbits. These orbits look shapeless. Most of these orbits, they look shapeless. And that is why... The orbit is the one that gives it what we call an irregular galaxy, as the name suggests. Okay, let's move on and look at the third type of um, galaxy, which is referred to as the spiral galaxy. Let's look at category number three that is referred to as an uh, mm, elliptical galaxy, I mean. That is number three. Is referred to as elliptical. Elliptical galaxy. Uh, just to look at it very closer. Elliptical comes from the name eclipse. Therefore, it suggests an ellipsoid, especially the shape of which our universe takes. It's actually in ellipsoid form. Therefore, it gives this type of galaxy an elliptical form. Therefore, the name suggests that it is an uh, uh, elliptical galaxy. And this one, is actually very simple is an egg shaped it takes an egg uh, an egg shaped form 
just as the name suggests, this type of galaxies, they are generally, they are generally, because they are numerous anyway, they are generally They are generally round, but they stretch longer on its axis. And that one brings to them to have an egg shaped. For example, when you look at an egg shape, that is an example of, a sh uh, of an egg. This is the shape of an egg. Anyway, they may be nearly circular, but they are elongated at the end and therefore they take a cigar like appearance they take a cigar like appearance in that manner but now when you look at it therefore e, 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 this egg-shaped figure or form gives it as an orbit therefore that means there are clusters of stars around but also comprises of the planet the stars and other heavenly bodies that are surround it and uh, when we are able to find it uh, an example is the sombrero galaxy is an example of an elliptical galaxy because it takes an egg shaped which is a cigar like appearance which gives us a cigar like appearance. Which is similar to the egg shaped uh, form that uh, brings us to. Uh, or, or when at its center, it is actually also made up of a, a galactic object. And therefore, this orbit indicates that there are actually a path over which other objects that are found in the heavenlies takes path around a galactic object and that is gives us an elliptical galaxy let's take time and look at um, our form of this elliptical galaxy in a chart Now, when we look at the shape of the elliptical galaxy, look at our chart. This one shows an indication of an elliptical galaxy, which is taking a shape of a cigar, like an appearance, or just an egg-shaped form. Uh, but at the center of it, there is a galactic center, which is the main source of light and that is the sun and then these are just numerous stars when you focus on one star you bring out an elliptical galaxy and at the center of it there is a main source of galactic center and that is probably a, a huge star that gives out the light and then this is its orbit the orbit is the one that defines the type of galaxy that it is therefore when we look at this orbit study at it carefully though there are numerous stars surrounding also the major galactic center when we focus on an example of one star for example we look at this one it will the same bring out the same orbit, such as this orbit that you are seeing. And closer to it, there are other heavenly bodies that are held by the force of gravity, the gravitational force that are held together. These are a part of the heavenly bodies. the heavenly bodies that are comprising into the galactic center 
and that one you'll be able to find out that they are planets also found in it and then we have the stars and we also have dust and other clouds but here there is also a comet these represent comets that are actually held in the outer space by the gravitational pull of the main galactic center and an example of this elliptical galaxy when we focus on it uh, the best example is the sombrero sombrero is uh, an elliptical galaxy among others this brings to us to be able to understand its orbit and how uh, when we focus on it there are various movements that are happening uh, if we'll be able to focus on the general galaxy specifically we look into the stars and the solar system then we'll be able to find out the planets uh, revolve around the main galactic center that is specifically we look at the sun because it is the largest stars of all other stars that are can be able to be found in various galaxies uh, with a huge or enormous amount of heat energy therefore this brings us to a summary of the third type of galaxy which is elliptical galaxy and then as a matter of fact when we move beyond this we'll be able to look at the star and looking at the star and looking at the star you will find out that the star has an important part that it plays on planet earth Therefore, after understanding, you will simply remember this name. This is an acronym that simply means we have the spiral galaxy. Uh, that is the spiral galaxies. Because there are many, and then we have elliptical galaxy. Elliptical galaxies. And finally, we have the irregular galaxies. The simple acronym is SEI for us to remember uh, the type of ga galaxies that we are able to have covered. Now, when we move along, we look at the star. And a star is simply a very unique object that is found in the main galaxies or in various galaxies. You will never miss any galaxy with a star. Therefore, what is a star? A star is a luminous sphere of plasma that is held together by its own gravity. And the nearest star to which the sun is actually found or belong is actually the sun. That is the nearest star that we can be able to study. Although from the earth it is around 150 million kilometers away from planet earth. It's seemingly to be near and we can be able to explore at it. We'll be able to look at the sun later. Generally, let us look at the stars. The other stars that are found in the various galaxy. Uh, from the, our understanding, you'll find that Stars are actually not born, but they are formed in groups that are called 
clusters. When we go in these various clusters, then we will find out stars. They are representing clusters or a group of uh, luminous sphere of plasma. And when we look at them, they are formed and all these stars, they begin in the same way as that material that was found in the nebula, which, is, was, more, uh, which was more dense cloud of gas and dust. And then the nebula dust and gas came together to form what you call a protostar. It came and formed what you call a protostar. And the center of it was getting denser and hotter. It was getting denser and hotter. As uh, more materials was packed or is packed in, its, in this protostar, eventually it created a suitable condition for the nuclear reaction. This form of reaction that is referred to as the nuclear reaction is a form of reaction where atoms of hydrogen are fused together with helium. You will find out that the hydrogen atoms are fused together uh, with their atoms of helium. Therefore, they produce a nuclear reaction. And then, in this manner, the nuclear fusion or reaction releases a vast amount of energy and light which happens to have that is vast energy the energy of light and also heat both energy of light and heat are given off in the reaction in the nuclear reaction of hydrogen and helium and this energy forms because it is happening in a symbol atom of this reaction, it shines bright and brighter. Steadily, it maintains its steadiness, and at this stage, it forms the main sequence of the galactic center, and that becomes the star and other stars that will be able to be formed in the same manner. Uh, we can also, we will also be able to look at the main center the galactic center object that is referred to as the sun. Then we have to note that stars have limited amount of energy because the hydrogen fuel eventually runs out. In the process, amazingly, we'll find out that the transformation will have to take place depending on how big or small the star is. Just like our sun will last for around 10 billion or 10, that is 10 million years before it runs out or it dries up of hydrogen. Therefore, when hydrogen dries up, that means the nuclear reaction will, uh, will stop and therefore the vast amount of energy, both heat and light, will also step. And that scientifically from the astronomic point of view, we will have said that the star has died. And then we will also look at it as we begin to use the helium producing, uh, that is, uh, other elements such as um, when a star swells up, 
we'll find that the hydrogen uh, amount that are found actually in the atmosphere, remember the previous time we looked at the atmosphere, it expands up maybe a hundred times and it becomes hot and hotter. Therefore, it gives us a red giant of another protostar that will give us the numerous uh, light which is now showing that maybe after it dies, after the stars has died because of hydrogen. But now here, most of it, the helium is found now in the atmosphere as it reacts with the remaining amount. Therefore, it again culminates and become a red hot giant of galactic center that brings us to the rebirth of the star. Now, in the outer layers of the atmosphere, you'll be able to have found out that within them, some of these elements blow away to form various forms of clouds in the space, which also may be able to culminate in the formation of new stars and also the planets. That brings us to be able to have found out the least bit. After we are looking at this series of, uh, of the galaxies, stars, and planets, let us look at the planet, just a planet in a simple way, and then we'll be able to drive into the next part of the solar system. A planet is an astronomical body that is always orbiting a star. Or a star, we also refer to it as the stellar. Can also be referred to it as the star or the stellar object. And uh, this one is a remnant of a massive enough to be round by its own. And then we are able to find out that planets revolve around the sun in an elliptical orbit. Uh, that one will bring to us to be able to have found out, uh, to look at the elliptical, uh, that is elliptical manner or elliptical orbit. This elliptical orbit comprises of the solar system. Comprises of the solar system. Now, when we look at all the planets, all these planets, they revolve around the sun in an elliptical orbit. And when we look at the solar system, then we'll be able to have found out what is happening between the planet and where actually they are found and how is their movement. And various planets have various distances. When we look at the solar system, we'll find that the solar system is comprised of various planets. And these planets, they are majorly eight planets. The eight planets that revolve around the major galactic star, that is the sun or the galactic center, that is the sun. Although initially, scientists had indicated there were nine planets, but the last planet uh, that was making it to be the ninth planet, it was uh, actually that is Pluto. Pluto has been disregarded as a planet. Therefore, it is categorized in a cluster of dwarf planets. Although recently, there is a discovery of another planet-like. It has not been given the name. But we'll be able to explore these various planet that are eight, specifically around the sun, when we begin with the first planet from, we will find that we'll have Mercury, 
just to mention them, we have Venus, and then we have Earth, and then we have Mars, and then we have Jupiter. And then we have Saturn. And then the last one is the Uranus. These are the eight planets. And then Neptune. We have the last one is referred to as Neptune. These are the eight planets that we can be able to explore. They are specifically found on the solar system. And all of these planets, they revolve around the sun. When we look at it carefully, we shall be able to have discover how, what is the characteristic of this planet refers to as Mercury, and then we shall look at the Venus, and then we look at the Mars, and then we look at Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune in the next part. Just to summarize up whatever we have been able to look at, I will give as uh, we will preview some three questions so that they are able to help us to grasp this concept. For us to be able to have found out or to have conceptualized Question one, I will ask, name the scientist who proposed, who proposed the origin of the universe, the origin of universe. on Big Bang Theorem. And then we looked at the second question. Find that how did the Big Bang happen? When we have to review this part, then explain, this is the third question, explain the singularity the singularity in the theory above and then the fourth question Identify three types of galaxies. And lastly, you name the 
the eight planets of the solar system. These five questions will be able to have taken us through uh, the, the concept. There are two scientists who propose the origin of the universe on the Big Bang Theory. You remember that one is the Bondigold and Fred Hoyles. That was in 1960s. That is where these two scientists who proposed the origin of the universe and how did they propose in the Big Bang Theory? In other words, how did it happen? They explained that it happened in a fraction of a second, that is around 13.7 billion years ago, where the matter existed as a singularity. And this singularity uh, was actually formed the smaller particles of proton that once it exploded, it is splitted into various direction. And as those great energy were released, some of it stayed at some of the center and they were converted to form the matter and the antimatter within the few minutes. And as a result of that, it bumped into each other and it began to expand. That gives us uh, uh, how it happened. And then the singularity, you'll be able to have explain it. It is actually a zone of which that defies the laws of science and that is where the black holes are, where there is intense gravitational pressure that is found in the outer space. When we identify three types of galaxies, that one is very simple. You'll have elliptical galaxy, we have a, uh, that is irregular galaxies, and lastly we have the spiral galaxy. And then you will have to work out on this. You name the eight planet of the solar system, and then we'll be able to have uh, to move in the next lesson. Have a good day. Thank you.